Hey guys and gals and all my YouTube pals, how goes it? Hello. Um, I'm gonna show you something interesting that um, some of you, the first part, some of you probably already know, but this is the discussion of superconductivity and at room temperature and uh, things of that nature. This is a what's considered pyrolytic carbon um, or some call it py pyrolytic graphite it resembles graphite after they go through the py pyrolysis process um, you can YouTube that or not YouTube well you could YouTube it probably but you could uh, wiki it and see what that's all about if you'd like it's uh, basically heat deposition uh, if I'm not mistaken but uh, I'm gonna show you when you cleave a piece of this it is one of the strongest man-made dielectrics or diamagnetics pardon me uh, dielectric um, as you can see pretty fascinating stuff right hopefully you can see that mm, you can definitely see my ugly mug Anyways, mm -hmm. now why this is so interesting is uh, because on its cleavage plane, it seems to bend uh, the magnetic field and uh, releases it almost like um, I don't know, almost like uh, my best analogy would be like in uh, a, uh, a wire how the sharp point releases the electric field or ions this is, does the same thing with kind of like a magnetic field which is kind of interesting um, but uh, what's even more interesting is this next effect which should be noted um, and I'll leave it up to you to think about its importance a lot of materials what I'm, what I'm gonna do there's a there's a group in Japan and that, there's been quite a few studies I'll link a, a, a really good paper on fullerenes or buckyballs which is what I'm about to kind of create kind of um, but uh, usually it's done by using a, a high power laser uh, and uh, like you could you could use a probably a light a light scribe or you know even maybe even a CD burner to do this to make these this little nanoparticulate type of graphite or carbon I should say it's carbon um, so and that's all graphite is too is just carbon just layered in a certain way so that's why it's, yeah, you can see why there would be some confusion in this material but uh, gonna sand it off like a caveman oh and drop it Actually, I have two things to note here. But first, I'll go with that. And get Robert Murray Smith fingers and everybody else who has ever worked with graphite. <laughs> uh, Alright, so. Let's come out here. I have this magnet here, right? And uh, my original hypothesis when I was just looking at this was, you know, that it would disperse it. Uh, let's disperse the uh, the um, and another thing. See if it does it here. Oh, doesn't good. Anyways, let's see if it disperse the the fine particulate of this carbon. Um, so, do you think it will? It doesn't look like dispersion to me. It looks like magnetization. So it'd be, it's become paramagnetic, I believe. It's, you would call it, you'd call it, that's the opposite of diam, diamagnetic, but, um, or, or is it ferromagnetic? Ah, whatever. Regardless, <laughs> it's become magnetic. So, um, so there you have it. And uh, that's interesting in thinking about uh, how certain materials can react according to its geometric structure. Um, 
and making meta materials in the future. And uh, there's a lot of possibility in layering and, uh, and configurations of different materials um, for environmental, not only transmission, but also reception of, of energy or movements through space. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's see, this has a little thing. Let's see what happens when I stick it here. Oh, smash it. Not much. <laughs> it's all just pretty much stayed there. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, take care. Talk to you soon.